to the fans and everybody in Unreasonable Doubt Nation, I'm sorry. I'm extremely sorry. I was hoping for a inspirational comeback season. That was my goal, something the podcast has never done here. I promise you one thing. A lot of good will come out of this. You'll never hear any podcaster in the entire country talk as much WVU men's basketball as I will talk about WVU men's basketball the rest of the season. And you will never hear someone push as hard to do that as I will push the rest of the season. And you will never hear a podcaster cope harder than I will the rest of the season. God bless. I, I recorded quite a bit last night, and none of it felt right. So it's the day after. Hello from the studio in Nitro, West Virginia. This is Unreasonable Doubt. It's a podcast about West Virginia University basketball. I'm Josh Witt. West Virginia played their 11th game of the season against Radford. What I don't even know the mascot for Radford. The Radford Highlanders. That's a cool that's a cool mascot. Darius Nichols put WVU out of their misery on December 20th. I'm not going to say that again. I'm just I'm just stating what's happening here. Radford beat the Mountaineers on a shot that swished before the shot went in. The guy who shot it dribbled off of his foot. The ball rolled. Him trying to gather it still had possession. He picks it up, goes right into a shot, shoots it over a guy, over Kerr, and makes it with, with one second left. And that was preceded by Raekwon missing the front end of a one and one with West Virginia up one. And that was preceded by a guy for Radford when West Virginia was up two, who was shooting over 90% from the free throw line, missing one of two. And that was preceded by West Virginia's offensive possession prior to the one-second heave. The ball, and I'm going to say this with all the love and respect in the world, West Virginia's last offensive possession, the ball was in the hands of Pat Sumnick, and he shot the ball instead of anybody else that was on the court. And I, I don't I'm, – I tried to – proceed saying that by saying with love and respect and I and I mean that I totally understand if you hear that and can't find any love or respect in that there was not there was not a shot clock violation the guy was taller than him it was close and I'm not making excuses for Pam's, Pat Sumnick he had the most gigantic bandage on his head that he was playing with and the, you know that's the that's the sequence at the end. It's still a close game against Radford when the first game of the season for for Raekwon Battle, he has a slow start, but then like he's not afraid to shoot and he can do things that other guys on this team cannot do. And he got the he got 29. And some of that was forcing it and sometimes he can just force the action because he's good at basketball and you can live with it like some of those drives like he's just he's just able to get to the basket and that one shot he shot over two Radford guys apparently he can make that shot it's not a oh no why did he shoot that apparently there's not a shot for that guy where it's like oh no why did he shoot that that's how good Raekwon Battle is West Virginia has been put out of their misery. Both things are true. West Virginia is not making the postseason. And I've determined that on December 21st. I I determined it yesterday after the game. Like after you lose the UMass and you've got three non-conference games left and then an 18-game Big 12 schedule, you gotta be (laughs) you gotta be seven and six. And there's no chance that they're going to be seven and six going into Big 12 play 
because they lost at home to Radford. And if you're listening to this, you can, if you're an optimist, then you can, the comeback is, well, Josh, every loss is explainable. We only had eight scholarship guys the first, what, eight games of the season and could have beat Virginia. But you lost that one and Pittsburgh, oh gosh, I can, I'm going to say this in the microphone. Pittsburgh is better this year than West Virginia. I have to say that with my teeth clenched. But that's how you explain that one. St. John's, you got bullied. And bless you, just did, you still only had eight guys at the time. And now as you're getting more guys, you're, you're starting all over. Everything looked different. And you wouldn't take it back. You want Noah to play, and you want Raekwon to play, and you want a cook to play, and you want Kerr to play. But it's you're starting the recipe all over again each time. And that's not easy, and especially not easy for a first-time ever head coach. Not easy. Difficult. Uphill battle. Challenge. And the optimist would say, all that's happened, and you've got the whole Big 12 schedule to turn it around. And yeah, maybe, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I honestly don't know the, the optimist argument for West Virginia making a postseason. It, you just have to say something out loud that is laughable. Like West Virginia will win the big 12 tournament in Kansas city. That's, that's laughable. It's something they've never done before. West Virginia has to have, not only a winning record in the Big 12, which is it's tough sledding right now. Did you know that Oklahoma is undefeated? I mean, they lost last night to North Carolina, but they were top 10 in the country. I didn't know. I did not have that in my head for Oklahoma. I, I was focused on BYU being out of the dark really good. Oklahoma's out there with one loss, and I couldn't name one guy on their team. They don't have any Groves twins. All the, Like, I don't. That guy that was annoying that was underneath, his last name was Hill. He's gone. Couldn't tell you one guy. They're in the top 10. And so laughable winning in Kansas City. And then you got to say, all right, let's say, yeah, it's still, it's still a work in progress. And maybe you, you find a way to split the next two. So you go into conference play five and nine or what, five and eight. And then you just go, and then you just win 14 games in conference. <laughs> I'll go ahead and do that. That's laughable. That's laughable. That's laughable. And 11 games in, West Virginia has not won two games in a row. In the non-conference schedule, West Virginia has not put together two games in a row where they've won. And we're 11 games in. And the UMass game, Jesse Edwards, was great up to that game. Not only did he have his first bad game, and everybody's allowed bad games, he fractures his wrist, and he didn't play against Radford because he's not going to play for four weeks. Because he had, instead of playing against Radford basketball, he was in a hospital having surgery on his fractured wrist. And West Virginia, the laughable part of winning 13, 14 games in conference, you got to do that with the first month of the conference schedule not having Jesse Edwards. So that I've I've gotten my laugh out that, but that is that is laughable. So Jesse Edwards has his first bad game. And so you look at who hasn't had a bad scoring night, Quinn Slazinski. 10 games in double digits in every game, leading the team in scoring. And the formula changes, and I don't know how much the formula changing has to do with Quinn having a bad night, or maybe in the 11th game it was just time for Quinn to have a bad night, and it's, in a, it's on a night where West Virginia loses by one to Radford. Double digits, in his first, double digits scoring in his first 10 games against Radford, four points, didn't make a three, 0 for 4. Kobe Johnson, DNP coach's decision. So the doghouse is alive and well. And if we took bets on, 
looking at the roster, who's on the roster, a lot of these guys we don't know very well. It's our it's the first season we're experiencing them playing for WBU, but there's a handful of guys that we know pretty well. Couple a few guys, two guys in particular that have been in it for the long haul. In college basketball terms, it's it's, it's their third season with the team. And from top to bottom, everybody eligible to play. Who and and we know the doghouse exists. Who would be at the top of the list of the first guy that would be in the doghouse? And if you say Kobe Johnson, you're a liar. I would put him, I honestly would put him at if we had 13 guys, I would put him 13th. In guys, okay, maybe Seth. Seth and Kobe, because they're a tandem item, would be tied for last place in guys that I would think would end up in anyone's doghouse. And that's where WVU is at in December, is that Kobe Johnson, DNP, coach's decision. Coach Eilert said, it's between me and Kobe. Yeah, you know, Kobe Johnson. Doghouse guy? Oh. Noah looked good. Noah was out there. Noah had seven rebounds. And Noah can get by people. I think in this one-game sample with this group of guys, we've got plenty of guys who can get their shot. And it actually has it has a feeling from two seasons ago on paper. Well, I mean, just eye test. It's not even on paper. The eye test is that you've got you've got a guy. Remember that season? Taz could get his shot. Malik Curry could get his shot. And I'm trying to think of who else could get their shot. But those two guys stand out. But that didn't really lead to a lot of. It led to a lot of ISO basketball. And it looked kind of ISO-y tonight, or tonight. It looked ISO-y yesterday, where just the end result of getting a basket. Sometimes that happened, and it did with frequency from Noah, but just not a ton of a ball movement with purpose. And this is the first time this group, when you add Raekwon, has played together, and Raekwon changes the dynamics on offense quite a bit. And so now from a coaching standpoint, you got to figure out, all right, Raekwon's our guy, especially until Jesse comes back. How do we keep everybody engaged and and get Raekwon to be the most efficient? Kerr had a bad night, but it's his second game. And his first game, he was hot. He, 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 the shot was going in. Tonight, just one glimmer of excitement and just a and a lot of unforced turnovers from Kerr. Um, all of that to say is that West Virginia uh, is not going to make the postseason. And that's the earliest in a season uh, since I've been doing the podcast that I can definitively say that. And I can hear the argument. Again, you can you can conjure up the path and you can rationally explain how West Virginia gets to four and seven to start a season. And I can hear that right up until you say that West Virginia is going to make a postseason. Can they pick their spots to be spoiler? Sure. I mean, even the crappy 2019 season where Huggins dismissed guys Played a bunch of freshmen. They, you know, they did. That team did beat Texas Tech, who ended up being the national runner-up. So you can you can spoil. They beat TCU in triple overtime, a good TCU team. So you you can you can get the full health. Jesse Edwards comes back, and you can spoil. Teams can say, "Oh, we've got an easy win at West Virginia," and West Virginia can do a not so fast, my friends. But as far as actual uh, postseason goals, that seems impossible. And I will state this as a fact, as I and I've already said it a few times, definitively, 
Make no mistake about it, and this is not a reverse jinx. West Virginia, it's not a reverse jinx. WVU cannot has ran out of time to pull it together, and they've done that in the month of December when you play games in January and February and March. Definitively. Period. End of sentence. End of idea. End of argument. Unreasonable Doubt is under the Smoking Musket umbrella. Another podcast under the Smoking Musket umbrella is West by Pod, WVU football podcast. Jordan and Joel are gearing up for the Duke's Mayo Bowl. WVU will take on North Carolina. They're going to break it down. I don't know how much they're going to talk about mayonnaise. I love mayonnaise. Big part of almost every sandwich that I've made. I've done the mayonnaise on grilled cheese bread, and that's fantastic. So I don't know how much of a deep dive they're going to do on mayonnaise, but apparently Neil Brown may get dumped in mayonnaise if West Virginia wins their ninth game. Ren Baker is due a a mayo bath due to people contributing to Country Roads Trust. So lots of football and possibly mayo talk on the next episode of West by Pod. Check it out wherever you check out podcasts. Smoking Musket. The next game for WVU is Saturday, December 23rd. It's got to be ugly Christmas sweater night, but it's not at night. 1 p.m. ESPN Plus, and West Virginia faces the Toledo Rockets. And what I would say, at Ken Pomeroy's computer, this might be the last game of the season where WVU is a betting favorite. And that has happened on December 23rd. Again, they're going to play games in 2024 in January, February, and March. This may be it for being a betting favorite. That, not that that guarantees you a win. We all understand that. Toledo, they play fast. They uh, are good at offense. They really struggle at defense. Toledo If you're going to go off offensively, which I'd love for West Virginia to do, this is your chance. This is your this is your get it right offensively game because it ain't going to look better for the rest of the season than what it's going to look like playing Toledo and their defense. But Toledo plays fast. They have a four game losing streak on their resume, including a loss of George Mason, who we're familiar with. Toledo has beaten Marshall, so there's that. They're going to try to go 2-0 against West Virginia schools. And, you know, I'm, I'll am i be watching it, and then I'll be podcasting after. Probably won't have to wait a night or wait a <laughs> I, I, I probably won't have to sleep it off and do a podcast for the rest of the season. It lasted two games for me pacing and being – engaged in my normal nervous way during a game with that loss of Radford, I can chill it down and just take pleasure in the good parts and not get rattled by the bad. And West Virginia's goal now is just to, um, to win a, you know, win this game. It's the, it's the game of the year. I don't, no pressure guys. It's the game of their lives. And it's against Toledo. That's it for this episode of Unreasonable Down. Listen on all the platforms or just pick one. Apple Podcasts, Overcast Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, YouTube. Until next time, I'm Josh Witt. WVU for the 2023-2024 season. They have four wins and they have seven losses.